Many good newspapers carry the controversial quotes. Have you asked for Scully's resignation? No, I have not. The mayor wasn't going to believe me because he knew I helped him. Said on Sunday, but pressure quickly mounted. On Monday, he issued a news release with this apology from Coker. It read, he I only apologize to Chicago residents of all races and religious groups who were offended by remarks made prior to my ascension to the mayor's office. I would think that I said, what is in love? I will talk with him and try and have him even got a disability. I'll rehabilitate him. And the mayor's pledge to rehabilitate Coakley were not enough to quell public outcry. <laughs> Wherever Mayor Sawyer went, he found himself back to the press. They give up one guy. organizations began calling for That's Coakley's out. That's the Italian Parade Committee man up there. This is the Columbus Day Parade I'm a pastor to have you. Why are you talking? For those who can make the donation, I'm going to do it quietly while we're running this. Do what you can. This is no pressure on no one. It's just a fighting force without a bank.
And um, we got you to introduce your little guys confidence in me and make it just better than you. And Monday morning, some period of time, and then it went public and it was a big All of that, and you're right. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Long. Thank you, Long. This is the place where Mrs. Copeland should have been terminated. You need it. Mrs. Copeland should have been terminated. After the time that went by, let's please to its comments and confuse the community.
Now I'm going to show you when Beach Farrakhan comes to town, I get fired when Phil Farrakhan comes to town late night. I'm going to take you to that left. You might not know my relationship, but you're going to see the brother standing there hugging me on the stage. And you ain't going to know it's the same two people. As much discussion and antagonism as we've thrown towards each other in the years since, as his dialogue lately has gotten a lot closer to mine. You need to know where we were before we got them far. Uh, these are things he called is the first man in the history of Chicago government fired for racism. And the Chicago government did. We need racist. But me. Uh, these are things we saw already. I'm going to leave up to, uh, I'm going to get up to uh, Farrakhan coming to town. Uh, Al Samson raises the point. I come in the city government, there was a white woman who was one of the weather women. And she bombed the University of Wisconsin and killed four or five white people. She was working as deputy press secretary. How come she can keep her job and Brother Copley ain't never even been arrested and had to give up his? We had another guy who was head of cultural affairs, a guy named Fred Fine. He was a Jewish man. He had been a communist. He had spoke as a communist in front of the House on American Activities. He can keep his job and Brother Copley had to give up his. As Gus Savage, who was one of the few people to stand up and defend me, who got defeated by a white, a black old scholar, he said, Steve Cope is the first man in the history of Chicago government fired for racism. And the Chicago government been pretty damn racist for me in 1988 to be the first one to go down. I'll be in his church that Saturday in Chicago, affirming with United, anybody in Chicago, we're going to have a little knock them out, sock them out, boule fest. <laughs> and on this afterwards, uh, they come on down with the uh, become fair, huh? I appreciate all of you who made a donation. I'm going to stop a minute for, uh, after I show this fair time piece, then we're going to stop on the intermission real quick. And then we're going to put uh, about a 20, 25 minute closing on there about what we can do past the day because of some things we need to do. If you. And for those who are willing to do that. Hey man, put him on the couch in there. Uh oh. Now this thing gets off backwards here. I don't want to lose nothing. This boy here, he had plenty of problems. <laughs> I mean, life is a real trip, you know. I'm sorry to hear about Phyllis Hyman. You know, every time I think about a black person committing suicide and other things. I always think about it only we had a chance to be near them to have cushioned it through to the other side. Sometimes people got money and like purpose. And sometimes without purpose and money and opportunity, they lose themselves. And it hurts a lot when you see that happen because, you know, sometimes if the black thing was a little bit more encompassing and compassionate towards those who are on the point, entertainers, athletes, and others, we could do a lot more for them. They could bring that back to the people. But we still ain't got a financer from the big people, and they're still dropping out and getting knocked out. Uh, come on, you get off of here, uh, uh, Carol O'Connor. Come on, y'all, this is a tape of Brother gave me. I was too much into stuff to be able to be home and take my stuff. So people had to give me the pieces, and I'm pulling all these out together. I had all these early lectures when I first came to Howard. And uh, people have been dying to get a hold of them, but I'm going to pull them out. I don't post them. Oh, this is uh, Rabbi Marx. This is one of the people uh, Farrakhan met with that in the Black and Jewish Relations 93. I put pressure on him for meeting this rabbi who was saying, kill Copley. And I wouldn't let nobody meet with anybody who was going to kill me. And I don't care who they were. You don't meet with the enemy, and you can't meet with me. You don't make the enemy feel comfortable, and leave me out there. And I'm not taking it after nobody. Here's a brother who is in the nation in Virginia, in Richmond. And I came here to speak, and I stood up and told about this, and I wasn't accepting nobody playing the violin and meeting with the rabbis. They threw him out of the nation. <laughs> threw him out. He's one of the best research men in this country. This brother Robert, he's the one that found Dick Gregory at the ADL fundraising. Y'all remember that piece? Where we showed Dick Gregory was flunking, raising money for the ADL. That's why we couldn't get him to do the ADL story while he was doing members' commercial appeal. Because brother found it. Brother found some good pieces showing Du Bois as an informant and a punk against Marcus Garner. They found a bunch of good pieces. Real good pieces. Uh, this is a local TV uh, news show uh, on the PBS station in Chicago. They couldn't allow me to be in the studio, so they had to interview me in the 
guitar because I, I was too black to go in the studio. I was not allowed in the public broadcasting station in Chicago studio. So he had to interview me in the park. These are stories in the New York Times and others running on me, talking against me, and this is going to lead us up to uh, our run this during the intermission, but I want to carry this up to Farrakhan coming to town. Dukakis was running against Reagan, a strike. Let's see, Dukakis was running against uh, George, Bush. George Bush and no, 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 no. Dukakis ran against Reagan. Here's the rally. 900 people jammed in this room. Farrakhan comes home to defend Steve Cole. And uh, this is going backwards. I'm going to hit this about a minute or two. Then we're going to break one of the mission, give you a chance to get a break or two. Then we're going to come down. I'm going to key up a couple of things and then. We're going to uh, talk. Notice Brother Copley comes in his bow tie, all the nation comes in his straight ties. <laughs> You'll see Brother Minister hugging me in a minute on the stage. What did he do? Damn it, what did he do? <laughs> this black man come out, he was really kind of on the time. He come out and said, we all boycott all the Jewish businesses. I had to come over and thank him. I said, I didn't even know you had it in you. Uh, you know. <laughs> yes, that's fair time. Okay, here we go. We'll cut it in right here. That's fine. No, because I think that uh, that is actually just as political as he is. He has called for a leadership conference, and he had those leaders with him today. But it is that Stephen Copley came here too. Farrakhan's embrace of Copley was a prelude for his defense to follow. What did Steve do? <laughs>
stupid statements. The most upright literature and ethics the world has ever known. 
Yet when they turned their backs on him, they produced a tablet, a work which has aptly been called a monument to human folly. The tablet also helps us understand the basis for Christ's unflattering descriptions of the Pharisees. Jesus described the Pharisees as hypocrites, children of hell, blind guides, whited sepulchers, full of dead men's bones. He even described the Pharisees as children of their father, the devil, a murderer from the beginning. The Talmud confirms Christ's word. In the Talmud, in Treatise Sanhedrin, an extensive passage describes the right of the Pharisee to kill anyone, just as long as he did so indirectly. As one of dozens of examples, the Talmud tells us that if one bound his neighbor and he died of starvation, he is not liable to execution. In such an indirect manner, the Pharisees also killed Christ. Manipulating the Romans to actually wield the spear and sword, the Pharisees claim, as their descendants do today, that since the Romans were the direct cause of the death of Christ, it is the Romans, not the Jews, who are guilty. Christ also called the Pharisees adulterers, an adulterous generation. The Talmud provides generous loopholes for adultery. It says the penalty for adultery does not include sex with a minor, the wife of a minor, or the wife of a heathen. The Talmud also encourages seduction of unwed adolescent girls called designated bondmaids. But it's important how such rapes are performed. With the designated bondmaid, one is guilty only in the case of natural connection, but not in the case of perverse connection. The Pharisees reason that rape in a perverted manner is outside the jurisdiction of the law. Normal rape, however, was punishable. In Babylon, sexual perversion of every kind had been a way of life for millenniums. The Pharisees were deeply influenced by such practices. In three of the major treatises of the Talmud are found extensive passages which give legal endorsement to seduce and marry three-year-old baby girls. In fact, many of the greatest rabbis of the Talmud, including Simon ben Yohai, upheld this privilege. Today in Israel, thousands of Jews go to Marathon every year to venerate the memory of Simon ben Yohai, one of the most respected rabbis in the history of Judaism. In one of dozens of endorsements of child sex, Simeon ben Yohai said, A proselyte under the age of three years and a day is permitted to marry a priest. Agreeing with ben Yohai, the great rabbi said, When a grown-up man has intercourse with a little girl, it is nothing. Or when the girl is less than this, three years and a day, it is as if one put the finger into the eye. The footnote to this passage says, as tears come to the eye again and again, so does virginity come back to the little girl under three years. The same section confirms that sexual in the story of the Good Samaritan portrayed the Pharisees as racial bigots, too self-righteous to respond to the suffering of one who was not a Jew. It is true because of the wickedness of the Canaanites, which included sodomy and infant sacrifice, Israel had been commanded by God to be harsh in her treatment of the inhabitants of the land. God made it clear that the Canaanites were not simply to be avoided, but destroyed. By the time of the New Testament, this method of preserving God's kingdom by separation and the sword had become obsolete. God no longer made a racial difference between men. But the Pharisees were unfazed by God's new agenda. The Talmud was finally written down nearly five centuries after. Let's give Brother Jamal a hand for this guy together. Right, the rabbi is, is saying, and you notice he said, I never, do you think the rabbi did it? No, he never do that. He said, well, let me out of the room, the rabbi I got to pick it up a couple years ago. But say, smoke me a uh, but it's key to show that certain people's religious values are in line. You know, that's why I'd be worried about the Jewish people with that Day of Atonement. They can jam you all year long and on one day ask for forgiveness. Even the Catholics got a component called confession. Well, they do shit to you all week and then confess to Father. You give them three Hail Marys and two our fathers and they go right back to doing you on Monday. And if you remember, you remember a saying I used to say, uh, we talked about the hundred virgins and with a thousand whores, but I told you many times, people out here saying, uh, I'm a vegetarian, I just eat chicken. 
relationship uncomfortable. 